All right, back with another episode of the Real Estate Growth Secrets Podcast, where I, John Garudi, interview top real estate experts from around the country. And today I've got an ex exceptional guest, Dan Zatowski. How are you doing, Dan? Hey, John, how are you? Thanks so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here in your group. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited for this episode because I've got a lot of questions. We're going to be discussing real estate investing. Sure. Um, but I like to start every episode off with the humble brag where you get to brag about your accomplishments in uh, real estate investing, but you got to do it in a humble manner. <laughs> I'll definitely try. I'll definitely try. But um, my humble brag in this in this vertical is basically that you know, um, I, I learned a long time ago, I've been doing this 29 years, and I learned a long time ago that chasing money was the wrong thing. And if, in my book, Pass of the Prosperous, you'd see that um, I used to flip, flip 40, 50 properties every year, netting 80, uh, 50 to $80,000 per property. Um, you could add those numbers up, it's pretty successful. Um, to the point where I almost lost my wife, my kids, not being around, working 100 plus hours a week, chasing what I thought was success. So when I learned around uh, now nine, 10 years ago, I made that switch and I changed it to passive income and learning how to create passive wealth, uh, both by being coming in the bank and with turnkey rental properties and emerging markets. So um, my brag is that I've, it's not even the real estate side. Yes, I've created a ton of passive income, um, almost six figures a month in passive income right now. Um, but it's that I became a great husband, a great father, a great friend, uh, family man because of that. So that's really where my brag is because it's I'm, I'm really not money motivated at this point. And, and it's hard for people to understand that. But when you hit your goals, um, what is really important to you? So real estate has afforded me the ability to do uh, those things with my family. It's afforded me to be involved in some great nonprofits right now. And that's that's my humble brag, not how much money we make, but what it's afforded me to do. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So let's let's talk about that that transition and that genesis from where you started out. You used to be a, a police officer in New York City. Yeah. And you moved from doing this, you know, you went crazy, then you realized you had this epiphany that, you know, you needed to be working towards something more than money. Like take us through that whole genesis, if you will. Well, sure. It's 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 pretty much my whole story. Um and what I was doing, I grew up, and this is what I speak about at events. I'm, I'm a keynote speaker. I talk about my life. I grew up. It was not an easy life growing up. Um, not to say I was in the streets or anything, but it was. we didn't have much uh, working parents to, to provide for whatever they could. My mother took off on us when I was young. My father was there as much as he could be, um, but pretty much fended for ourselves. At 18 years old, I basically got kicked out of a house, had to join the military, and I always swore that I was going to be successful. I came out, I couldn't find a job. I became a police officer uh, with a wife and a kid, made really hardly any money. Um, and my success was always based on money because we had no money growing up. So it was always like I was going to be successful. And I always thought success was having the most beautiful cars, watches, um, boats, uh, vacation. And I have all that. I've had the nicest cars you can imagine. I have a boat. I've had boats. I have a watch collection that could choke a horse right now. Um, <laughs> but I thought that was success. It was, it was feeding my ego was all it was doing. Um, and then I was working my butt off. I was never home. I missed kids events. And I still remember to this day, and I get chills even talking about it. Uh, we, my wife had an argument and told me it was a you know, horrible fall or horrible you know, husband. I was never around. I wasn't there for them. And that really like somebody stabbed me in the heart. Like I was like, wow, you're basically telling me I'm like what I grew up in. The, the household I thought I grew up in is what I became. And I did everything in my power not to become that. But my problem was I thought providing items instead of my time was what they wanted and she basically told me like i was like i give you everything you have beautiful cars you have watches you have vacations you have a boat anything you want you have we go out all the time and she basically just hit me in the heart and says well we don't have you you're never here the kids don't even see you and that kind of crumbled me to the ground and i realized real quick at that point i better make a switch otherwise i'm gonna be real unhappy i'll have a lot of money and i'll be real unhappy so yeah. I always tell people, I said it was a lot more sexy, you know, when I was flipping a property, I was a fix and flip guy for many years. I was doing 40, 50 properties a year and I'm netting anywhere from 50 to 80,000 in that range per property. So I'm making multiple seven figures a year, year after year. So you would think I'm the most successful guy in the world. And then I'm sitting back and I'm like, well, I could either flip properties and make 50 to $80,000 or I can get a rental property and make three or $400, which is more sexy to you. Right. So everyone's, you know, the 50 to 80,000 is a lot more sexy. 
But when you make that, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars a month and you do it hundreds and hundreds of times, it gets pretty sexy. And every yeah. month, you know, that payment comes in no matter how hard or how little you work. And you build something for yourself, you build something for your family, and you get your time back. So um, that's really where the epiphany was. Um, it, it wasn't, it, thank God for my wife that she smacked me in the face and, and with reality, because a lot of, a lot of marriages, they wouldn't have done that though. You know, a wife or a husband, they would, they had everything they wanted. You know, if they're with you just for the money, they had everything, just work harder. I mean, Sunday nights and we go out to dinner with friends. I was outside till nine, 10 o'clock at night in a restaurant. She had to pack my food and bring it home. So it's not just in real estate, it's in any business, anything you do, if you're doing something, and your vision, we always talk about what is your vision? What is your, my vision is to have the time to do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, anytime I want. And if my vision and my actions are different and they don't align, I have to make a change. So everybody you talk to, and you're a real estate agent, so everyone you talk to is like, why are you a real estate agent? They might say, because I want more time with my family. While you're out there doing open houses on Saturday and Sunday, you're driving people around all day during the week at night. I don't know what it is, but is your actions going like this and your vision going like this? You're, you're two different pendulums. Yeah. So um, now whatever I do, whatever I do, I look at it. I'm like, well, is this going to take me away from doing what I want to do with my family? Is this going to take me away from choosing my life? So I, I, you know, I constantly hashtag lifestyle by design, uh, be the bank, passive wealth. Um, and now we teach it. We have the passive wealth Academy that I'm, I'm the operator of. We own, we have a ton of students in there. Um, and we teach them a couple of different things on how to raise private money, how to build a $10,000 rental portfolio, how to do seller financing. And I actually love it. I love changing people's lives now because you get to a point where you hit your goals and that's what's next. You yeah. kind of go through depression. And I have a mentor. My mentor said, well, you're really doing the service, not helping other people, but you got to mm -hmm. help the right people, the people that invest in themselves, the people that find value in themselves, find value in you. Those are you. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Awesome. So let's talk about how someone like myself or anybody out there can get started in real estate investing. I mean, what do you need like financially? Because I, I, I'm not even sure myself. Like, do you need five grand, 10 grand? Do you need a hundred thousand dollars to start doing this? Absolutely nothing. You need nothing. All right. You need, you need, and, and, and people laugh and, you know, I know you've seen this, you know, starting real estate with zero dollars down. It's true. If you, if you, there, there's two sets of people in real estate investing. There's people that can raise money or have money, and there's people that can find deals and, and be the deal architect, right? So if you want to get involved and you say, listen, I have no money, but I'm great at going out, knocking on doors, pounding pavement, finding deals, being a project manager, making sure the deal works, and doing all the due diligence, which is a lot of people don't want to do because they're just plain out lazy. They want to get rich quick, right? Well, if you bring that deal to someone like me in my area, I would maybe partner with you on the deal and say, okay, I have the funds, let's do this together. And that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. um, or, or you learn how to raise private money. Okay, and that's why we teach it. It's not, it's not really hard to do. It's hard to do the right way if you don't learn how to do it the right way. So we've raised over $30 million in private money and used it in over $200 million in velocity. And I do private money training all the time. Uh, I just had a webinar yesterday. And I talked to some people. One of my last students did his first private money event that we showed him how to do. And he has three chiropractors already now that want to join him. So you don't really need a lot of private money because how many deals can you do at a time? So yeah. it's, it's, it's really getting out of your own head. And I say that in, in anything. It's getting out of your own head, finding a way to do it the right way. When you're looking at properties, if you come across a property that looks like a good deal, bring it to somebody that has money. They'll either fund the deal or they'll partner with you. So you really need no money. And let's be honest, we've all started in this. I just told you I came through the ranks. I didn't have anything. I left the military with a wife and a two-year-old daughter. I had $250 in my bank account. All right, mm -hmm. so I didn't have anything. I wasn't, gro I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I didn't have rich parents. I just had a will and a desire to make it work. My first deal, my first big deal, I mean, I bought a condo when I was 18 years old. My first big deal was I optioned land. Believe it or not, I'm in New York. I went to Arizona. I bought an. I, I took an option on land, fifty thousand dollar three year option, on over four hundred acres of land. Right, fifty thousand dollars. I didn't even have come close to knowing how to get fifty thousand dollars. Well, the <laughs> three year option on that land. I raised fifty thousand dollars. I started selling the land off on an option to builders. Who? What builder is going to talk to some twenty something year old kid from New York? Well, we did it and we got it done. And everyone told me I was crazy. I remember people telling me I was going, 
I remember to this day, family my I was going downhill. I'm going down with this deal. I'm like, where else can I go? I have $250 in my bank account. How much further down could I go? I'm going to take this chance. I'm going to make it work. And that's when that's the shame is when people have to make it work, they do. When yeah. they have something else to fall back on, they try it. They put their toe in the water. And that's not the way to do this business. And I'm not saying leave your job, but if you're going to be serious, my best students right now, my best students, my most successful students are the ones that don't have money right now, don't have time right now. They will do whatever it takes to make this work. And they're successful. Now, some are more successful than others, but they're successful. Awesome. And I guess that mindset, right, of looking at this, this is a long-term play, right? You're, you're not making that money one, two, three, once you land that deal. It, you got to look at this over the long term and be in it for that. Right. Well, you have to understand what your goal is. What is your vision? My vision is passive income. My vision is not the, you know, there's a lot of people that could wholesale deals right now. Um, you can make a quick few thousand dollars wholesaling. I don't like it. I'm not a wholesaler. I don't like fixing and flipping much anymore. I do it once in a while on a certain property, but it's not my model. If it falls across my lap, I'll do it. Um, but I'm not a transactional investor. I don't like being a transactional investor. It's just a job. You just create another job for yourself. Mm. I'm like building something that's going to pay me every single month. If I want to raise, I just bring more properties in. And every year I add a certain amount of properties to my portfolio. If they fit my niche, if they don't fit my niche, I sell them off. That's that's the ones I'll wholesale, the ones that just don't fit my my portfolio. But I don't go out there with the intent to wholesale or, or flip. Sure. So let me ask you, of all the deals you've done now in your lifetime, what do you think, looking back, was like the worst mistake you made um, when it comes to an actual investment deal? Right. Oh, that's a great question. And it's not just one deal. It's a bunch of deals because, you know, <laughs> I'm a little hard-headed, right? I, I, yeah. I don't believe in insanity, you know. Um, <laughs> it, it's trusting. It's trusting people um, and not doing your own due diligence. Every mm -hmm. time I've gone through a deal um, in the past and I didn't do my own due diligence, I kind of got hurt. The other thing is um, partnering with people that don't put any funds in the game, skin in the game, um, and partnering with them 50-50. A lot of times you're going to get burnt. I, I say a lot of times because I'm going to say this right now. I have one partner right now that I wish I, I started doing business with him 20 years ago. Um, he's the most ethical, um, loyal, honest person I've ever met in my life. I've probably ever met. And I just can't believe he's a businessman because you just don't see that too much, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so other than that, which is an anomaly right now, so I'm going to tell you most of the time, trust but verify. Do your own due diligence. Um, when you're working with a mentor, do your own due diligence on that mentor. Um, these gurus out here, you know, I educate people. I hate the word guru because um, I'm actually act I'm active in the business, right? I'm not here to make money in education. I'm money in, I make my money in my business. But um, that's the biggest mistake I did is not is not um, doing my own due diligence on deals, trusting other people. And mm -hmm. if I keep doing that, and it's on anything, and I'm hard headed, I constantly like to trust people. But it's it, every time I do it, it falls apart. You know, it just happens. It's good, better, and different. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. So I've learned now to do my due diligence. And it's funny because when you do your due diligence on somebody, they go dark. You don't hear from them anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they bring you a deal. They want you to fund the deal for them or they want you to buy the deal. And you ask them a couple of questions, you never hear back from them again. It's like they're expecting you just to say yes and throw them money. And in the past, I used to do that. Or I used to just buy the deal on, on somebody's word. Now I don't do that anymore, you know, because I want to not only protect myself, but a lot of deals I buy now, I sell to my investors that are looking for turnkey rentals in emerging markets. I have a ton of buyers. Like last year, we sold 182 properties. We sold it to only 18 people, right? So it's average about 10 per, per person. That's the average. Um, I most bought 22. My least bought one. But we sell properties all over the world now, not just in the United States, internationally. I have buyers now from Portugal, from um, uh, Canada, from Israel right now. So they, they're not going to fly in all the time. But if you don't take care of them, they're going to buy one property and they'll never buy another one. And yeah. that's not the type of business I want. I don't want a million investors on my lending side. I don't want a million investors on my buying turnkey rental properties in emerging markets. I want to deal with less people, better quality people, and give them, provide them a ton of value without not getting somewhere else. So that's my goal. Now, I can't make guarantees to them because anything can happen. The only thing I can ever guarantee anybody is I'm going to mitigate the risk I best I possibly could to my lenders or my investors. Sure. Awesome. So let me ask you now, 
I mean, you've so you've been in the business a while. I mean, how do you see real estate changing now? We've got all this craziness going on in the news with coronavirus. It's, you know, a lot of fear in the market there with the stock market. But, um, you know, as you know, real estate changes fast, pretty fast. Maybe not as fast as other markets, but it, it you know, that constant change is there. Like, what do you see happening in the next five years in real estate that's different from today? Well, I, I, I do see um, all the speculation, people that buy on speculation in, in uh, cyclical markets, they're going to get hurt in those markets. That I do see. Um, being that I bought in, in areas like emerging markets, oh, I'm sorry, I, 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 turn this off. I bought in emerging markets. Um, give me one second, let me just put this on mute. Um, I just you know, disturbed that. I thought I did. I apologize. Um, being that I bought in emerging markets, um, I don't see, I, I've gone through three market cycles. I've gone through the worst depression in history, right? 2007, eight, nine. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get hurt because what happens when banks stop lending, um, as long as you're in a good emerging market with a ton of job growth, and I'm not talking about like, you know, corporate America jobs. I'm talking about your Amazons, your Lockheed Martins, your FedExes, your Walmarts, your supermarkets, your um healthcare companies your those type of companies your your schools as long as there's jobs there blue to white collar jobs they're going to need rental properties um and investors stop investing in the stock market they're going to start investing in real estate in those markets because of the returns and building wealth but what i don't do what i where i do see the problem and i see it's happening a lot now is the um the offers coming in the overbidding price the mortgages that are just they, they're, they're getting a lax again on the mortgages so What's going to happen is the, the rates are going to go down. Prices of real estate are going to keep going up so people can afford them. And that's going to cause issue in sick local markets. Your markets like your Miamis, your your L.A., your Chicago, your New York, your Philadelphias, your mm -hmm. Seattle's, your Oregon's, those areas are going to have issues. And you got to look at you got to look at political avenue out there, too. Right. California has rent control in it now. Right. So those investors now are pulling their money and they're coming to us. They want to work with us. They want to get those better returns. Mm -hmm. uh, Washington, Oregon, you can't evict the tenant in the winter now. That's passing now. So you got to pay attention to what's going on. Wow. So that's what I see happening. The other thing I see happening, which I sold out all my multifamilies, and I'm the anti-multifamily guy. Everyone's on that multifamily train right now, right? So mm -hmm. when everyone jumps on the train, I usually jump off as fast as I could, right? Everybody's a multifamily guru right now. Everyone's making it rich, a multifamily. Everyone's talking about all the doors. They own a multifamily. But they, they don't own anything. They own the doors. They're a limited partner. Or they might be a GP, and they're giving up 70% of the equity to their limited partners, right? Um, but in multifamilies, here's what I see the issue is going to possibly be. Last multifamily we sold, we, we bought it in a 9.7 cap. We sold it two and a half years later to a 5.8 cap. Multifamily cap rates are based on net operating income. So when mortgage rates go up, net operating income comes down. Okay, cap rates go down. Debt coverage ratio is how banks finance those. Well, the guy who bought our, the, the group that all bought all multifamily property has a, a five year reset. So they have a 25 year amortization with a five year reset, which means in five years, they're going to have to refi that loan or pay it off. Well, if that interest rate happens to go up in five years from now, the debt coverage ratio is going to decrease. They're going to be that note could get called due. They might get not be able to refi. Okay, so the only reason people are jumping in multis now, the only re reason I would ever think about jumping in multis is to do a quick value add and get out of it. But mm -hmm. um, I think it's everyone starting to um, hedge the market right now, and that's where I think people get in trouble. Um, so uh, people are taking on a ton of debt, right? I don't take on a ton of debt. Um, so when I started, I was a Robert Kiyosaki guy, right? Leverage, 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 leverage. Now I'm more of a Dave Ramsey guy. Pay debt, debt, debt. Pay it down, right? So right. I have a ton of assets. I have very little debt. So if the market changes, even if my some of my properties go vacant, I'm going to be okay. So I protect myself. Um, so that's really, it's a planning phase. You have to plan out right. You have to buy in the right market. You have to know exit strategy. What are you going to do? If you're doing a fix and flip and that property you can't sell because the market just took a tank, and your property went down $100,000, can you rent that property out and be okay? Or are you going to lose everything? So yeah. that's the problem that I see people getting. I see what they're bidding on these assets because, you know, I'll go to a property and, and I have some other investors come in and they just way overbid what they should be bidding at. And God forbid, once that, because mm. it's going to sh shift. And once it shifts, you know, everybody's talk, calling for it. Once it shifts, 
they're going to get caught with their pants down. They're going to, you know, they're, they're, the private lenders out there that are lending money uh, irrationally. I just heard another private lender. I got a call the other day. A private lender lent money to somebody. Not only this, borrowed money from someone else, lent the money to an investor, and never recorded a mortgage. The property was sold. Okay, the, it was never recorded. So the property was sold. The, the investor got his money, never paid off the private lender. So mm. good luck trying to get that money. So yeah. now you also borrowed money for that deal. You did it. You did it. Um, you, you were incompetent in the way you raised the money. So now you have to worry about that other investor coming after you. It's just there's no there's no skin in the game. There's no barrier to entry into being a real estate investor. There's no um, there's no insurance. There's no licenses. There's no regulation. And I I'm somebody who doesn't like government regulation. Um, but in a situation like we're seeing now, it's creating a, a travesty in the industry, and it's going to hurt the industry unless people wake up and start doing things the right way. Right. But hence and lies the opportunity, right? When that when that shift happens, those who are yeah. smart and have the cash, like that's yeah. the time to to go in, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So you're and we're that's in between pendulum where we're cashing up, but we don't like our cash sitting too long. We like it to make money, so we go into deals that make a lot of sense, and we're very conservative in the deals because we raise a lot of capital from our investors. So we have a lot of people with IRAs and four hundred one ks and health savings accounts and Coverdell accounts. I like to fund our deals because we're very conservative in what we do, um, and we have to be um, we have to treat their money like it's our own. You know, we, we don't make money until they get paid back and they make their money. We we come we're secondary, and that's what's helped us build our business for so long. Awesome. So Dan, I want you to drop your biggest real estate growth secret when it comes to investing. Um, look at the future, plan for your future, and work on your vision. Like for me, it's it's building building a residual income now to do what you want to do when you want to do it. So if you need to retire in five years, stop working, send your kid to school, buy real estate, buy rental properties in emerging markets, right? Let that pay for your toys. If you want to buy a car, buy it. Don't buy the car, buy the real estate property. Let the rental income pay your car note. Uh, you can go to college, buy real estate now, let the rental income pay for the college. Um, don't worry about being transactional, plan for the future, figure out how work backwards. So figure out how much money, what is your vision? My vision is to do what I want, when I want, anytime I want, how much money would I need to do that? I know what, I know what my number is. How many deals do I need to get to that number? Yeah. How many deals do I got to look at to buy a deal? How many investors I got to speak at to fund the deals? So, and then stay steady every single day, build a relationship every day with like-minded people. Um, and that's really that's really the big big golden nugget I can give you. I appreciate it. That's awesome. So last two questions here. What real estate professional do you highly respect that you think could share some amazing value with the uh, with my audience? Um, well, one of my mentors is uh, Mark Evans. Uh, he's not just real; he's business um, and, and mindset and systems in place. So he, he's phenomenal. Uh, and I got to take, he's one of my mentors, right? So I would say, I would say Mark Evans, DM. People know him as DM, deal maker. So, uh, deal maker. Nice. Yeah. All right, Dan, is there anything else I should have asked you? Um, no, I think you asked a lot. Um, the biggest thing is that people want to follow us. Well, one is they, they definitely, my story is in my book. Yep. It's Amazon bestseller, Passive to Prosperous. You can get it on Amazon. I'd love people to read it. This um, this is an organic movement for me, um, where people read it and they we we had a real estate company by two hundred seventy of them give them to their agents. They they paid us to come in and do a sales training for them. We signed the books. Um, it's changing people's lives, not just in real estate, in any business because it talks about uh, your vision and your passive income. And then the rest of the book talks about kind of how I do my business. So that's one. Two is if they want to follow us, um, they can go to our, we are on a YouTube page. We have a YouTube page where we have some videos. Not a ton yet, but we have some really good videos there. That's on the Zatovsky Capital Management. So my last name, Capital Management on YouTube. But in uh, we also, for your audience, we can give them away a free cheat sheet. Awesome. So they can go to PassiveWealthAcademy.com forward slash 42K. So PassiveWealthAcademy.com forward slash 42K. We give that away to our students all the time. Um, anytime I speak, it's a PDF. They can download it. I wrote it. It's great. If they want to follow me on, yep, that's, 
uh, yep, that's perfect. Um, that's great. It's a PDF. They'll love it. Um, if they want to follow me on Facebook, um, unfortunately, my personal page has too many people on it. So, and I don't put any content really on my personal page anymore. So they can go right into a free, we have a free group. It's called Become a Real Estate Investor with Dan Zatofsky. So go to that Facebook, go to that free group. The only thing we require you to do is answer the three questions to get in. They're very easy questions. But um, if you don't answer those three questions, my team will delete you. Um, there's, a, there's a reason why. One is if you can't take two seconds to add, answer some questions, um, you're probably not going to provide any value to the group. And we're not looking to be the biggest group. We're looking to be the best. And it's grown organically. A few thousand people in it now. It's phenomenal. Nice. Um, we have a lot, and I put a lot of content in that group. Okay. And that's, my, that's one of my free groups. So there's no cost to be in there. Once again, become a real estate investor with Dan Zatofsky. And uh, just go in there. Be a good person. Don't try to sell anybody. Don't take advantage of anybody. Don't post, don't post deals. Don't ask for money in there. Just ask questions or give content. That's all we do in that group. We kind of protect people. There's a lot yeah. of other groups out there that you can post your deals and be taken advantage of. I just have to protect the people in that group. Sure. Um, it's This is just a love of passion for me. There's no money in it for me in that group. So um, I'd love to see everyone in there and ask questions, I mean, and get started. You know, everybody's starting somewhere. Don't, don't be intimidated. Yeah, I'll definitely be in there. I'm just certainly going to check out your lead magnet here. Um, I'm definitely interested. So awesome. I appreciate you so much coming on, man. This has been awesome. And I, I learned a lot. And I hope everybody who watches this video uh, certainly uh, brings home some information that will help them start building passive income as well. That's awesome. Thanks so much for having me on, John. I appreciate it. It's nice talking to you guys. All right. Thanks, Dan. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.